There are many days, many, many days that I want to cry. I do desire just to give in because the stress of this world can be overwhelming. But yet there is God. God sees me through so much in my life. So many situations of travail, burden, angst, pain, depression, stress, anxiety, overwhelming sensations. God is there. I must say, I am turning 44 at the end of this year, next month. And God has given me 44 years, going on 44 years of blessed life. It's been stressful. It's been a burden. But I must say, if you hold on to your faith and allow God to comfort you, if you give God the burdens that you are going through right now, then I promise you, God will step in. Jesus Christ spoke these words. Jesus Christ said that he is going to be with the Father and that there shall be a generation to go about and do greater works than what he has done. Do you believe within all of your heart that you are part of that generation of humanity in which Jesus Christ spoke on? I know I do. There are many of us out there who are filled with faith, but we don't know what direction we truly shall be going in here on this earth before we transition to heaven. Because there are assignments, there are duties that we shall uphold as humanity. And one of those assignments is peace. How many times is the word peace in the Bible? Peace be unto you. Peace be still. And I know, I understand that many people see when Jesus was asleep and his disciples woke him up. And Jesus spoke to the waters and said, peace, be still. Jesus was not just speaking to the waters. Jesus was speaking to us as humanity. He was letting his disciples know, I am here. Fear not. Fear not. Just because there is turmoil, tumultuous situations, travail, trouble surrounding you, yet, it shall not touch you. Do you believe these things? Do you believe these things within the bottom of your spirit, from your root stock? Do you hold on to the word of God? If you really think on these things every single day, every single day, we inhale and we exhale. But how many times have you ever had to tell yourself, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. How many times have you had to say, heartbeat, 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 heartbeat. You don't have to say these things. We don't have to tell our brain to formulate a thought. We don't have to say, tongue, move up and down, vocal cords, vibrate. We don't have to say any of these things, for these things to occur. That is the gift of now. That is the gift of life. So when you give God all of the troubles in your life, God will give you in return the gift of life. That is why people say, I can breathe again. I feel as if a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. Because that is true. It's not just metaphorically. 
Because just because we cannot see these things, because they are not just in corporeal form, does not mean they do not exist. We cannot see the air we breathe. Have you ever walked into a room not knowing the situation, but you can tell soon as you walk in, it is thick. The air is thick. You can cut the tension with a knife. That is energy. You cannot see that, but you can feel it and you know it exists. You know it does. Think on this. We are the most prolific generation of humanity to ever walk this planet. Why are we the most prolific generation to ever walk this planet? That's not the question. How is it? How is it that we are the most prolific generation to ever walk on the planet Earth? How is that possible? This is how it's possible. Because we never, we never had to see Jesus in the flesh to believe that Jesus died on the cross for humanity, for you and I and every single individual and collectively, Jesus did so. And we believe from our rootstock, from our spirit all the way through to our soul, to our flesh, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. We believe these things. That is how powerful we are, but we are slipping on the power that God is giving us because we are distracted by what is going on in society. 2025, that year will be a year filled with shock and awe. There will be many situations that will surprise you. There will be many individuals who will be superseded by someone who is considered less than. It is a transference. It is a shifting of the grace of God because God knows who has no guile. We do not know who has no guile. Therefore, we lean on the understanding of God. And God loves a man or a woman with a pure heart and no guile, is that you? Are you aware of your spiritual endowment that is inside of you? Are you tapping into the spiritual endowment, the spiritual enrichment, the spiritual multiplicity of the Holy Spirit, our comforter, who is here with us for eternity? Are you tapping in? to that. That will carry you to the next level. Now, how do you tap in to the spiritual endowment that is already innate, lying dormant inside of you, waiting you, tearing on you? Will you tap into that? How do you do it? This is how you do it. You must consecrate your own self. You must believe within your own heart that you are made in the image and in the likeness of God. It is one thing to believe and to be saved. That is the faith of a mustard seed. And that is one of the greatest parables. Yes, that is a parable of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. All you have to have is the faith of a mustard seed. That is it. That is it. But why would you stop there? Why would you stop at the faith of a mustard seed when God said, if you believe, you can move that mountain and cast it into the sea. If you believe, you can lay your hands on someone and they shall be healed. If you believe, you can lay your hands on someone and they shall rise. Do you believe? Then, if you do believe, you believe with all your heart. Now it's time to get to know God. 
to believe in God is one thing. But to know God is another. You believe a lot of things in your life. But when you know something, it is foundated. You know who you are. You don't believe who you are. You know what your name is. You know these things about yourself. Even if you had to name yourself. Because there are people who don't know their parents. There are people like that. So if you don't know your name and you had to name yourself, that is your name. We have to know. Because once we know who we are, no one can tell us who we are or who we are not. They cannot do that. And this is what God needs from us in this current generation. God wants us to get to know God for God. Because in the beginning, there was darkness. And we always speak about the light of the Lord, the light of God. But God was in the darkness. God was there. So anytime there's darkness, don't you understand that still is God? When you go through all of that drama and that stress, that was ordained and assigned by God. So we, when we go through this, since God gave it to us, we must in return give it back to God. Oh God, yes, you gave this to me, but I'm giving it back to you, God. I'm giving it back to you. Now, you are able to use me as a vessel to get this done, but I'm giving it back to you, and you will instruct me. You will move me. You will use me as a servant. You will use me as I was an avatar for you, God. You are in control, God. I am that vessel, God. I am that servant, Lord. Once we start to hold on and know that we are servants of God, that we are God's servants. And we start to use social media collectively as God's center, God's account, God's outlet. Then we are moving in a progressive generation towards peace. And humanity needs peace. The phrase, fear not, appears in the Bible 365 times times that ought to tell you that humanity needs not fear yet fear sells fear produces money and money is not evil but money is the root to evil it is the root to evil and fear produces the root to evil, which is money. That's what sells. We must be aware of that and not be idle. What does it mean to be idle? Idle means to move back and forth, back and forth. And if we recall, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit moved across the waters, idling, Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Don't idle. Because an idle mind that moves back and forth and mind that is easily distracted is the devil's workshop. Don't be so easily distracted. And now we live in a society to where it is called instant gratification. IG, instant gratification. That is what IG truly stands for. When decades previously, it was called delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is when you work hard, humbly, do the things that you need to do. Yes, you can take care of this. You can purchase this now. You can make these moves now, but you delay it to take care of 
other things and to stay focused on what it is that you are doing just because you got the bonus doesn't mean you need to spend it now, sit it to the side and keep focus, keep taking steps for the Lord, keep paving that way. And yes, you get another bonus and you sit that to the side because God has more for you. Because if you stop and you focus in on those bonuses or you focus in on this little pleasure, then you miss the placid pleasure God has for you. You miss the ocean of pleasure that God has for you. You miss the expansion of your territory looking at that one or two tokens when you could have multiplied those tokens. The faith of a mustard seed is all you must have. That is it. But that is not all you can have. Jesus didn't say that is all you can have. This is what makes it a parable. Jesus did not say you can have just the faith of a mustard seed. That's where it stops for you. That's where the buck stops. So if you ask in the name of Jesus Christ, by way of the Holy Spirit, and you commune with God, and you ask God for the faith that Jesus Christ carried, what do you think God would do for you? Have you ever taken the time to ask God for the faith of Moses? Or have you ever asked God for faith that is greater than Abraham? Have you done that? Have you asked God for the endurance of Esther? Have you asked God for any of these things? As a matter of fact, not meaning to blitz you, but when was the last time that you have looked into the mirror I to your own eyes in that reflection and said, I love you with your name in it, your full name. I such and such love you such and such. Say your name. When was the last time you have ever looked in the mirror and said those exact words with your name attached to, you, to it? When was the last time you've done that? Looked in the mirror and said your name and I love you together. And that's it. Typically, when I ask people that question and they answer it honestly, they say, you know what? I've never said that. A lot of people say, I, I say, I love me some me. I say, I love me all the time. I love me. All yes, but that's not what I asked you. When was the last time that you looked into the mirror and said, I love you as God loves you? Or I love you just with your name attached. Did you know if you said the phrase fear not one time for every day? Because it's in the Bible 365 times. So if you say it one time, right now, every day, that's one time for every single day of the year. That's one time for every single day of the rest of your life. Now, isn't that something? Because if you keep repeating and repeating and repeating and making it redundant to believe and to know God, then what shall approach you when you make it redundant? To know who God is and then you go out and be fruitful and multiply as God has asked us to do as Jesus even did. Jesus' mother, his brothers, his family came up trying to get to Jesus. Jesus, your mother's here. Your brothers, your family's here, Jesus. Jesus said, all these people are my mother, my brothers. My sisters, anyone who does the will of God is my mother, is my brother, is my sister. Was that an insult on his family? No. He was speaking in the name of God. He came here to do the work of God. And Jesus wants us to know him, not just to believe. Jesus came to do the work of God. And by Jesus coming to do the work of God. God, that means Jesus didn't come in the name of Jesus. Jesus came in the name of God. We must understand that Jesus was here to do the work, the will, the method, the strategy of God, not Jesus. This is why Jesus said, you come as an individual. You must find God for yourself. I am the truth, the way and the light and also the life. And that water and that food, and the air we breathe. God is all. 
We have to believe and then know these things. Because once we start to know God is all, then who can tear us away from God? Who can tear us away from the things that God has put into our lives, into our our spirits, nobody, no thing can tear us away from what God has given and implemented into us. We are the chosen. We are that select few. That is why this generation gracing this planet Earth right now is the most prolific generation to ever grace planet Earth because we never had to see Jesus. We never had to see. We go off of faith not sight. And this is why we have all this advancements going on. Pay attention. Do not become idle. Use what God has given you. Use it and let go of what the world has for you. Mm, mm, mm. It is not the flesh. It is principalities in which we do struggle against. So keep your faith. And know if you let go of all the drama and all the problems in your life, nothing can separate you from God. Nothing can. So hold on. That is how you get to God. Is the how. That is how. As you go through the phases of believing. And then you get to the phases of knowing God. Telling yourself that you love yourself. That you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. If you say it enough, you will believe it. That is what makes it redundancy. And redundancy is a reward. Not just to a major corporation who wants redundant motions. Yes, you think on this. This is what makes multi-billion dollar companies succeed is the redundancy of us employees. By us coming in, doing the paperwork. Me, I'm a chef. By me coming in there, cooking the recipe to spec or to specifications. The next chef can come in and cook it to spec or specifications just like I did because I didn't alter the recipe. I cooked it just the way the chef wanted it cooked. The next chef comes in and cooks it just the way the head chef wants it cooked as well. Or if I'm the head chef, I write the recipe. You cook it the way I say cook it. And the next person does that too. So that is what makes it so consistency is the redundancy. And if we do that with God, if we do that in our life, all the bad habits shall fall. We have to stay focused and we have to understand that we are one race, God's race, the human race. We all are. The power of the human mind. This is where God operates. This is the original computer. This is is God's supercomputer, the human mind. You can have a thought about someone and they text you, they call you. You can think about a TV show and next thing you know, the TV show is on TV. You can think about what you want to eat and the next thing you know, you go get it to eat. The power of the human mind. That is amazing. You can take yourself anywhere you want to go in your mind. We have dreams, visions in the human mind. That's where God is in our heart and in our mind. And we must understand the heart is not the physical heart. It is the spirit that dwells within us. If your spirit is pure, that means your heart is pure. Renew your mind within God, within the Lord. To renew your mind within the Lord means you are renewing your mind in the message that Jesus Christ the Nazareth has given to us and we are practicing that. And then, therefore, you transition into renewing your mind into God because you were made in the image and in the likeness of God of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit. Let us make them in our image. That image is the Trinitarian, which is God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. That is the image of us. And we were made in that image and in that likeness. So we must hold fast and learn how to love and support each other as the human race. We are all one race.
And I love you as God loves you. And I support you as God supports you. So be blessed and stay phenomenal. And remember, plan strategically for your life. Our life will strategically plan for you. But before we go, we must say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, individually and collectively, God, by the way of the grace, mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit. Father, we recognize you here and now, Father, because we understand that we are one race, God's race, the human race, that we make up humanity, Father, and you have placed us here for a specific reason, Father. And that specific reason, Father, we lean on your understanding for. And we learn it day for day, step for step, Father. We thank you for all the time, Father, that you give to us, Father. We don't take it for granted, Father. But we do understand and we do claim and hold on to the promises, Father, that you have given our ancestors, Father, and that you have made with us, God. So we thank you for giving us the opportunity to get to know you, not just believe in you, Father. We hold fast to what you've taught us, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, by way of the grace, the mercy, and the ever-loving powers of the Holy Spirit, Father, we recognize you here and now and give you praise, God. A man, a man, and a man. Remember, keep God first place in all that you do. God is number one. Nobody else is number two. Because everything flows through God, including you.